Welcome back to Katie's Art World. I'm Katie, and today I'm going to try out this uh, Strathmore Ready Cut watercolor paper. It is hot press paper. I've never used a hot press paper. What I usually use is um, a cold press paper by Canison. It's really heavy duty, thick paper. Um, I really like that, but with uh, the color pencil work and the new um, antics, ink tense pencils, it um, has a bit of a texture that sometimes I don't really care for on my pieces. Um, sometimes it's not a big deal, but um, let's open this up. And it oh, it came with 25 sheets, and I will have a link. And the description from where I got it. Well, let's see. Well, that's got some texture on it, too. Let's see. I don't know if you can tell. It looks like it's got a little bit more texture than the um, cold press I've been using, but we shall see what that looks like um, the other side looks a little too repetitive this side looks a little bit more just a little grained but we are gonna check this out I'm gonna put this back in the little plastic if I can so that way the sheets stay nice and clean. Okay. Put that out of the way. And it is kind of a small piece. It's only five by seven. Um, but that's good for some little frames and stuff that you find on sale for pretty cheap. Um, let me find my tape. Oh, there it is. And when you're working on paper, you're going to want to tape it down so that way, especially if you're working with a medium that requires water, you're going to want it taped down so that way, if it buckles, it, it'll dry flats if you are patient enough to let it dry before you untape it sometimes I'm not but I'm really trying to be more patient and not untape things early I think next time I might get the next size up on these because after you tape it you have even smaller surface to work on. I can take this and tape it a little bit further out. It didn't tear under the tape. That's good. I am running out of tape. And I want to make sure that I push those edges down so whatever I do doesn't end up underneath underneath the tape. Last one I reused tape and it bled underneath the tape when I was doing my wash on the backgrounds.
I'm pressing it as hard as I can without uh, on the board, not on the paper. I don't want to dense the paper. But then I'll just run my thumb across it to make sure there's no lifts in the tape. Okay, so that's how I tape my paper down. I'm going to go figure out what I want to draw on this and I will be right back. Okay, so I went and made me a cup of coffee. Um, as you can see, I like my coffee with a lot of cream and sugar. And I decided that I'm going to try and do a water lily with a frog sitting inside and maybe a little lily pad. Um, this might be biting off more than I can chew, but uh, if you don't take chances, you don't know. So um, let's get into the drawing portion of this because you got to draw it before you paint it. Well, I do. Some people can paint without drawing first. One of these days I'll be able to. So I think the lily pad is going to kind of be off the screen or off the screen off the hang over the edge and draw with a very light hand um, this this pencil is a 4h pencil so it's like really light um, you want to not only have a light color pencil but you want to use a light hand so you don't dent the paper and I think there'll be a couple of little holes in this lily pad like something had a little snack My baby sister absolutely loves frogs, so this might be one that she stakes claims on. We shall see, if it turns out anyways. And then I think there's going to be the flower is going to take up a lot of this space, but we want some space not taken up by the flower. Let's see, let's find a shape to go with, kind of like a, a little swooshy thing, almost like a, a little cup. That's going to be the inside um, petals of the flower. And the frog will be in here, so the frog's not going to be very big. Um, let's see, so that's the inside, and then we're going to have to have some petals coming off. I don't know about you guys, but I have the most problems with these kinds of flowers that have kind of more uh, sharper petals, more pointy-ended petals. For some reason, me and them do not always get along, but this time it's going to work. Positivity. Um, let's see. Maybe one out here. And a little space. And another one. I 
I do have a reference photo that's from Pixabay, um, but I'm probably not going to be going 100% accurate off the photo. So that petal overlaps the uh, lily pad. And then we have one that kind of scoops around like that. So those are like the, the outside ones. And then we're going to have some inside ones that aren't all the way down. And this is why you want another reason why you want light pencil strokes because like I can erase those lines from the the petals that were underneath for these petals that are above it like right here's another little line right here And, but I think this one I want to be kind of more turned up a little. So like these little, they look really short, but they are actually kind of like poking out at you. So there's the same length that's just coming towards you. So it foreshortens, I think is the pro uh, appropriate word for that. Let's see, this goes. And then there's like little petals back in the back of the flower. And that little froggy, he's going to be sitting right here. That's his little face. I 
think he's just sitting there waiting for a butterfly or something to fly by this flower to try and pollinate it and he's going to eat them up. There's the leg. Get rid of some of those petals that are behind there. And his other little leg is up like like that and then his little one of his little arms is right here a little elbow Their little elbow. So we've got little bulgy eyeballs. And then the inside of the flower is right here has like little little yellow tidbit thingies technical terms here technical terms tidbit thingies that's a petal Okay, now I'm going to use my my 4B pencil to try and darken up that froggy just a little bit. Just so I don't lose them. This eyeball is more like that, I think. Pops out. That. He's at an angle that both sides aren't the same. That looks really weird. Those two eyes look really weird. I might play around with that when I go to add in color. Make them look a little bit less crazy. <laughs> Maybe I should fix it a little bit first. I don't want to go smearing around the the um, lead, so I'm just tapping it. Let's just kind of get the same size circle there and I'll worry about the details later. This little couple of his little fingers show right there. 
Okay. And then go in to the lily pad. Change up the outside shape of that a little bit so it's not so predictable. I'm just adding a little bit of darkness um, to these outside petals so that way when I color in the background I don't miss the shape of the flower. I mean, that way I don't uh, actually paint over it. Okay. I think I'm going to try my ink tense pencils with these. With this um, piece, might be a mistake, but you never know. You never know. I'm going to probably. Just lighten up a little bit. Actually, I'll wait until after I get the background in, and then I will pick up some of the uh, lead from the pencil with my kneaded eraser. The background is really, really dark. Oh, I forgot. There's like some kind of little twig thing coming out over here 
I think it's under the water still, but... I think it's the little anchor for the lily pad. A little stem. We'll bring it over to it. Okay. Um, it is like a black background, but I don't want to start with just black. I think I want to build up some colors so that way it doesn't look flat. Um, let's go with, I think it's indigo or something like that. Oh, I'm going to, I think I'm going to go ahead and use my ink tense pencils too. Let's see. Navy blue, iron blue, deep blue, iris, bright, deep indigo. Put that one back. I'm going to use the deep indigo and a red. Chili red, maybe. These lay down pretty smoothly on this paper. I don't feel any rough roughness. Let's go over that with deep indigo. I think we might speed through some of this process. Okay, so that's the first layer of the background uh, laid down with um, chili red and deep indigo. Let's add some water and see what this looks like. I'm using a number 12 round.
think I activated all of the ink from the ink tents pencils. Going to kind of just touch over all of it just to make sure. That way when I get into the detailed work, I don't uh, accidentally activate some of that. That looks a little rough, but I'm going to do another layer. I think I'll add some more of the indigo, maybe. But I kind of like that there's different values in there. It did make a difference if you added the red pencil first or the blue pencil first on how it, it uh, reacted. Well, indigo pencil. Um, but I really like how that looks, but I got to let it dry before I can add any more layers. I will be back as soon as it dries. Okay, that's the third layer. Um, the first layer was uh, chili red and deep indigo. And then the second layer was just deep indigo. And this third layer, I put um, dark chocolate. And now we have to wait for it to dry again and see what what we get. Hopefully this time it will be more of a solid color. A little bit of difference is okay because it gives a little more interest but I didn't want to be blotchy. I will be back in, in a little bit. Okay, I think it's dry. I didn't wait very long though, so hopefully it's dry. Um, I'm going to start on the lily pad. I picked out some colors. I picked out like a reddish brown and a yellowish color and then a few greens to work on this lily pad. I'm going to start with uh, some uh, a reddish brown to go to kind of go around the little holes.
Okay, so that's really wet and I gotta wait to um, mess with that some more. I should have left it alone because I liked the way it looked before I added another layer, but I think uh, we're able to achieve multiple layers with this, so I'm not gonna stress out about it, but I do have to let it dry before I can add more layers to it. Hopefully, uh, I don't mess it up anymore, <laughs> but um, every piece has ugly stages, and this is just that uh, water lily pad's uh, ugly phase right at the moment. I will be back shortly. Okay, um, that's not completely dry, but I decided I want to start working on the froggy. I'm going to start with the yellows. I'm gonna use the sherbet lemon, or sorbet lemon, however you want to say this. Got a line behind the eyes. And then kind of a line going down the middle of him. And then under this elbow, it's a little lighter. Under that elbow. Touching the wet leaf with my hand. Okay, and then. Need a mid tone. So I want it to be spring green. Spring green's still pretty br bright. Maybe we'll go with a little bit of it and see what it looks like up against that yellow. with this light olive is the dark tone And that's a, um, a petal right there. Try not to color over the, the petal. And 
And he's got black eyes. Let's see. And let me sharpen that so I can get it nice and detailed in there, hopefully. There we go. That's a nice sharp point. I'm going to leave that end white for now. a little sparkle to the eye. It might all blend out uh, when I put water on it, but we'll try to at least have a little bit of the white paper showing. If, if I have to, I do have a white gel pen I can add white back to it. And now I want my little, littler uh, round brush. It's a size 8 I might actually want a smaller one but that's the smallest I have right now I'm gonna start with the yellows and wipe it off so that way we can keep as much of that light yellow as possible Wrong way. Zoom in to that froggy. Let's touch these eyes with some water. So that way it didn't spread any more than where I had it. And this little froggy has some bumps on him, so I'm gonna add a little, little bump bumpage.
Okay. I'm going to let that little froggy dry. And we'll come back and do some more work. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm going to start on the petals. I'll probably go back in and add a little more to the frog after I do the petals. Um, this set does not have a lot of pinks, which makes me a little sad because pink's my favorite. Um, but I'm going to use the carmine pink, which looks pretty red to me. I'm just going to dab a little in on the the tips that have some deeper color and then hopefully fade it in um, because some of the petals are darker and some of them are lighter and uh, and all that. I also might end up using some of this um, tangerine color because I like that color <laughs> so we'll see. I might use both colors. I might just stick with the one color. Um, but I'm going to try my best to get it on a nice fade color, fade of color through the petals with just the one color. At least to start with. And this petal got a little bit of the green from the... Um, lily pad on it and some of these are darker towards the base of the petal too so I'll add a little color to the base as well and around the edges on some are darker maybe I'll start with one petal and see what the blend looks like. Let me get, I'm going to use my bigger round brush to blend it out. I think it's got some green left in it. Rinse that out. It's very intense. Let's work on the next petal. This one it's got a little bit more color down and through the petal. And I will address the uh, cast shadows and stuff later, I think. I might should have started with the shadows. 
so that way the color could go over top and make it not be so solid but I didn't start that way so I think that has a good um, amount of color difference in it. Um, of course, we won't know for sure until it's dry, but, and that one's a little lighter. I'm gonna come back to it. This one's darker. Side of the petal showing a little bit on this. Okay, it's been about two and a half hours and it feels dry. Let's untape it and see what we have.
I tried to rip a little bit right there, but not too bad. I don't know if it shows up on camera like it does in person, but I think it came out pretty good. I'm going to sign it in the lily pad. And that was really fun to do. I like the paper. Uh, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Have a great day.